I'm Amanda Lolly, and I'm going to be doing a cooking show with you called Allergy Friendly Cooking with Amanda. I started this allergy friendly cooking quest whenever my son was diagnosed with allergies a few years ago. And let me tell you, it was very overwhelming. I was scared to death because I had comfort foods that I cooked, oh, you know, round the clock that I just loved to cook, and I had to change everything about my cooking. So now, every time I cook, it's an experiment. I try this out, I try that out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So today, I'm going to cook with you some mini cheddar meatloafs, some uh, potato wedges, and no-bake cookies, all allergy-friendly. And when I say allergy-friendly, I mean that it doesn't have any of the eight common allergens, which are egg, dairy, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, shellfish, fish, and wheat. And when you cut all eight of those out, it cuts a lot of different foods out and you have to learn to substitute. And I'm telling you now that if you can learn to substitute your foods, you can make almost anything that you made before just in a different style. And it tastes, it tastes really good and my kids have Learn to love it. Easton started out young and he's used to it, loves it from the very beginning. My whole family eats it. So first I'm going to start out with the mini cheddar meatloafs. Of course you got to start out with some fresh farm grown ground beef. And normally you would put an egg in meatloaf, but egg is one of the allergens. So we will not be having egg. And instead, the substitute we're going to use today in this recipe is a tablespoon of flax, flax seed, and three tablespoons of water. Now, the tablespoon of flax and the three tablespoons of water equals one egg. And you can use that in any recipe. There are lots of different substitutes, though, for egg. And in different recipes, I like to use different substitutes. Also in this, you need half a cup of quick cooking oats, a tablespoon of Canadian steak. This has a lot of different seasonings in it, and I just love the flavor of this, so I add this in my meatloaf. The oats I put in today are also gluten-free oats. Gluten is not one of the eight common allergens, but a lot of people have gone to gluten-free, and my son has a gluten allergy, so a lot of the things that I fix is gluten-free as well. We also are going to put milk in this, and dairy is an allergen, so we're not going to use cow's milk. Today we're gonna to use coconut milk. You can also use rice or almond milk as a substitute for your milks. And it's three-fourths cup. And what's great about this is you can buy it in bulk whenever you go to the stores. Um, and you can just set it on your shelf. It doesn't have to be refrigerated until after you open it. Put that in there. Just make sure you're mixing it all up really well. And then the last thing after you get this all mixed up is to add your cheddar cheese. Now this is not dairy cheddar cheese because we can't add dairy. So this is rice cheddar cheese, which you can find at health food stores or local Hy-Vees also carry it. Once you get all the cheese mixed in, get your pan ready. Once you get the cheese all mixed in, then you need to get your pan. I like to use this uh, stoneware pan because it has four different spots for loaves. If you have a child with allergies, but the rest of your family doesn't have allergies, and you want to make separate meatloafs, then you can put your 
allergy-friendly meatloafs in these two and for the rest of the family in these two or however you want to do it because when you're buying for um, children with allergies it can get very expensive or a family with allergies it can get expensive so if you want to separate it out then this is a great pan for that plus the meatloaf um, season this pan really well so I'm going to even that out put those in there evenly just put a little bit in each one till you think it looks about even And after you get those filled up, then you're going to make a sauce for the top. The sauce is my favorite part. Whenever I was growing up, I didn't care much for meatloaf, but I didn't like the tomatoey sauce either. And I have a bit of a sweet tooth, so my sauce is a little sweeter than probably most. But you start out with a cup of ketchup. Oh, and I like a lot of sauce on them too. About three-fourths teaspoon of mustard. And three-fourths cup of brown sugar. That's the part that makes it sweet, of course. When I was little, I also liked to help my mom in the kitchen. My favorite part was to do the brown sugar because whenever you dump it out, it always looks like little castles. So I always thought that was fun, getting to press that down and build castles in the bowl. Plus it tastes really yummy too. So then you mix all that together So it has a nice consistency of a sauce. And after you get it all mixed together, you spoon it out equally onto your mini meatloafs. them covered. And then they're ready to put in a 350 preheated oven for 50 minutes. The next thing that I'm going to fix with you is allergy friendly naturally, which is the best part. You don't have to substitute anything. Everything that comes with it is allergy friendly. And to go along with the mini meatloafs, we're going to fix some potato wedges. So you take about four or five red potatoes, cut them in half, long ways, cut them in half again, cut them in half again, till voila, you got some potato wedges. And after we get all these cut up, we'll put them in some salted boiling water for just a couple minutes. It helps soften them up a little bit and it doesn't take quite as long to cook them in the oven that way. My kids love these potato wedges and it doesn't take a whole lot to make them. Just a few spices and it makes taste really good. After they're all into wedges, then you add them to the boiling water for a couple minutes. And I salted it before. So just drop them in there and be careful not to burn yourself. Then we're going to toss them along with some olive oil in a bowl, just enough to coat them. Put some on top of them. Just 
want to get them covered with enough olive oil to make the seasonings stick to them. I think I'm going to transfer them over to this bowl because it's a little bit bigger and I think it'll be easier to stir them with the seasonings in them. Okay, we're going to add a little salt and pepper. It's about three-fourths teaspoon of pepper and a half teaspoon of salt. A tablespoon of paprika. Half teaspoon of garlic powder. And for a little kick, got about a half teaspoon of chili powder. And then you just mix them all together until they're evenly coated. And now that they're evenly coated, we're going to put them on a baking sheet. I use olive oil spray, not the butter spray because we're trying to stay away from dairy for all those kids or people with allergies. So just do a coat on there. Spread your potato wedges out on it. Spread them out so they're not on top of each other. Got a few more left. Let's see if we can fit those on there. And normally I put them in a 400 degree oven, but today, since I have the meatloaf in there, I'm going to put them in the 350 oven and just bake them for a little bit longer. And at 400, we would bake them for um, 20 minutes. And these will probably bake for 30 or 40 minutes on the 350. Next up, we're going to fix uh, our dessert, which is going to be no-bake chocolate cookies. Now we're going to make some chocolate no-bake cookies. We need to add all this in a saucepan because we're going to be boiling it for a minute and a half. So a uh, three-fourths cup of milk, and again, I used coconut milk, and again, you can use rice or almond milk, whichever you prefer. A cup and three-fourths of sugar. I know that's a lot of sugar, but it's not going to be so yummy without it. And then you have a cup, I mean half a cup of coconut oil. This is in place of butter, and we can't use butter because it's dairy. So I love coconut oil for desserts. It gives it that little bit of a coconut flavor, but it's super yummy, and it has the same consistency as butter. So it works really well in desserts. Four tablespoons of cocoa. And then we're going to put that on the stove top and let it boil for a minute and a half. Just mix it all up real good and wait for it to start melting and for that coconut oil in there to start melting and making a sauce. The meatloaf timer is going off, so we're going to check that and see how they look. I'm going to go check the chocolate sauce for the cookies now, see if it started boiling. Oh, just starting to get those little tiny bubbles on the top, so I'm going to go ahead and set the timer for a minute and a half. And let that go ahead and boil, and then it'll be ready to add to the oats. oats. Nice and bubbly, it smells delicious. Before we add it to the oats, we're going to add the sun butter to it. Not peanut butter because peanuts is one of the eight common allergens. This is a great substitute. It tastes really good too. It's made out of sunflower seeds. A half a cup of that. You want to add it to the chocolate while the chocolate's still nice and warm so that it melts. And then we're going to add a little bit of vanilla. I love the vanilla 
flavor it adds. Good catch. Just about a teaspoon. You want to add that also after you take it off from boiling because it will cook out if you add it while it's boiling. So you want to add. Then just continue to stir it until all your sun butter is melted. Once it's melted, you can add it to your oats. A chunk there still. Now these are gluten-free oats once again. You don't have to use gluten-free oats if you do not have a gluten allergy in your house. You can just use regular oats. We have three cups of oats here. Add the chocolate to them. Mmm, it smells so good. And just mix them all together. And once you get them all mixed together, then they're ready to drop on some wax paper to set up. Mm. Doesn't that look good? I think I could just eat it like this. Just big spoonfuls, however big you want the cookies to be. Like that. You're going to love the way these taste. The sun butter, the cocoa, the little bit of coconut flavor that it adds to it makes them so good. Once you have them all out on your wax paper, then you'll let them sit there until they harden a little bit, until they set up, and then they'll be ready to eat. Perfect ending to your meal. Perfect little sweet ending. Now that everything's out of the oven, the meatloaf's ready, the potato wedges have a nice crispy outer side, and the no-bake cookies are setting up, I'm going to try a little bite and see how this tastes. Mmm, the meatloaf is delicious. See how this potato is with it? Mmm, perfect together. I just want everybody to know that you can still cook allergy friendly and have delicious food. So if you're cooking for your family at home and you need some allergy friendly recipes, you can go to email recipes at SheratonValley.com. Another tip I have from my home is if you have some children or family members that are allergy friendly and some are not, to help the others remember which is allergy friendly, I label them AF. Just write it right on the packaging, allergy friendly, so that everyone in the house knows which is the special food, as we say, and which is not the special food. Let me try one of these cookies to finish this off. Mmm, delicious. It just melts in your mouth. It's so good. I can't even describe it. The little coconut flavor that bursts in your mouth and some sun butter. Mmm, so good. I'm going to finish that after we're done filming. So thank you for joining me here in my home today with Allergy Friendly Cooking with Amanda.